Hey, what's up everybody? This is Sam and welcome back to the in-app purchase video tutorial series. In this video, you'll discover how to get started with in-app purchase as you navigate the uncertain waters of iTunes Connect. By the end of this video, you'll have made some changes to the app to support in-app purchase, but at this stage, you'll just be logging out the different products. The most important aspect of this video is learning how to get your app and iTunes Connect set up before then creating the products that are available to purchase within your app. In-app purchase can be a nightmare to set up. In addition to the code in your app, it also requires many parts of iTunes Connect. First up, you need your app to have a specific bundle identifier, which can be created through the member center. This app ID needs to have in-app purchase enabled. Note that in order to get the sample project working, you'll need to change the bundle ID and create an appropriate app ID in your member center. This is because in-app purchases are related to a specific app and have unique IDs. If you attempt to run the starter project as it is, or create an app with the same ID, iTunes Connect will not let you. Once you've got an app ID set up, you can move over to iTunes Connect to create a record for that app. Before doing this, you must check that you have a current paid applications contract in effect. If you do not, then in-app purchases will not work and you'll have no idea why. If you don't have one of these, then get started on it now because it can take several days to come into effect. You can create the app record for your app. This must be the same bundle ID as you created in the member center and have associated with your app in Xcode. Otherwise, once again, IAP won't work and it won't tell you why. Within the app record in iTunes Connect, you can create in-app purchases, which require specification of their type, name, product ID, price, description, and a screenshot. The ID should start with the bundle ID of your app and then have a unique string on the end, retaining reverse DNS notation. The IAP must be marked as cleared for sale, otherwise you guessed it, IAP won't work and it will not tell you why not. Whilst you're in iTunes Connect, you should also set up a sandbox user. This allows you to test in-app purchases without actually having to spend any money. You'll probably need a few of these, so if your email provider supports it, you can use the plus notation you can see behind me. You'll require a real email address so you can confirm the account and you'll have to sign in on a real device. Otherwise, as ever, IAP won't work and it won't tell you why. Finally, in the App Capabilities tab on Xcode, you need to activate in-app purchase by flipping the switch. If that all works for you first time, then you're doing better than I did. When it doesn't work, try tracing back through the steps and just check everything is as it should be. Don't expect any helpful error messages on the way. This process can be rather frustrating, but you only have to do it once. Once you've created the products inside iTunes Connect, you need to pull them down into your app. To do this, you use the SK Products Request class, providing a list of product identifier strings. This is an asynchronous call that delivers the results to a delegate. At this point, you'll have an array of SK products that you can query for metadata and are required in order to actually make a purchase. The first thing you need to do in order to support in-app purchase within your app is to make sure that you've got a bundle identifier set up. You do that inside the member center, you just head over to the certificates section and then the identifiers section. You can see I've already got one here, it's called, uh, the app is called Greengrocer, my identifier is com.raywenderlick.greengrocer. And within that, make sure that in-app purchase is enabled. Now you can create this really simply, you need to have a specific one. You can't have com.raywenderlick.greengrocer because I've already created that. So it's really important that you do this at the beginning and then I'll show you in a minute where you need to update that inside Xcode. That's all you need to do in here, then you can head over to iTunes Connect. iTunes Connect has several things that you need to do. First of all, you need to make sure that your agreements and contracts are all set up. In the main one you need here is the paid apps one. That needs to be all okay. Not pending, not requestable. It needs to all be done. Otherwise, in-app purchase won't work and you'll never know how. That's a fairly simple process, but it can take a couple of days, so make sure that you've got that sorted out. Next up is creating the app record itself. So if you head over into My Apps, you can see that I've already got one for Greengrocer. Very simple to set up. You need to make sure it's got the right bundle ID enabled. 
Other than that, I can then head into the Features tab and see that I can create some in-app purchases. I've already got the ones that I need for this app. I've also got this sample one down the bottom here. They're very, very simple to set up. If I just show you the page, you first of all need to choose what type you want. So I'm going to choose non-consumable for now. The reference name, that's just a name so that you can recognize it inside iTunes Connect. The product ID is incredibly important. That is the bundle identifier for your app with a name of the in-app purchase on the end. You can't reuse these even if you delete an in-app purchase. So make sure that you get this right the first time. So for example, mine are all com.rayrendelic.greengrocer and then the name of the in-app purchase. You need to make sure it's checked clear for sale because otherwise it won't work even in the test environment. You need to make sure that you've selected a pricing tier. You need to have some languages. So this is what the user will see. They'll see the display name and the description when they are buying the products. You can choose here to whether or not you want to host content with Apple or whether you want to host it yourself or, or not at all. And then finally, in order to actually get it to submit, you need to submit a screenshot with it of it in action. I'm not going to do that. I've already got mine set up. Part of the challenge, so at this stage, you need to set up the ad removal one. So replace com.raywenderlick with your own organization ID. Your challenge is to make sure that you've got these other three set up at the end. Once you've done that, there's one more thing that you need to do whilst you're in iTunes Connect. If you head back out to the top level, and that's create a sandbox user. If I head over into the users, you can see there's a sandbox testers. I've got two of these set up at the moment. These allow you to use the App Store testing environment as opposed to the live environment. You, when you want to test your in-app purchase, you don't want to actually have to pay for it. You can create as many of these as you like. They're very simple. They're fat. They look just like setting up any other account. You need names, you need an email. Unfortunately, you need a real email address so that they can verify your account. You'll also, in order to activate it, need to log in on a real device when we come to that section later on. You need passwords, you need secret questions, you need all of this stuff as you normally would. You can see I've already got two here and a feature of my email provider allows me to put this plus and then some kind of qualifier so that I don't need hundreds of email addresses. I can just use my main email address and add this qualifier on the end. Now that's all you need to do inside iTunes Connect. So now we can head over to Xcode to see what changes we need to make and then how we can use Storekit to actually pull down the list of products that we've created. The first thing you need to do is make sure that the bundle identifier matches the bundle identifier that you created and then used inside iTunes Connect. That's here. I've just got com.raywenderlick.greengrocer. Just update that to match yours. You also need to select the team that you're using. So I'm using my personal team. You need to make sure that it's registered as the team that you signed into iTunes Connect with. Then head over to the Capabilities tab and scroll down and find In-App Purchase. I just need to turn that on. That links the store kit framework and it also makes sure that in-app purchase is enabled on the app ID. Now the app is ready to go, we can start using store kit and the first thing we want to do is pull down the list of products that are available. Use the project navigator to find the IAP helper class within the IAP group. At the moment, this is just an empty NS object subclass. When you use store kit to request a list of the products that are available for purchase, you have to provide it with a list of product identifiers. So first of all, you're going to create a property to store them, and then you're going to populate this in the initializer. Here, the initializer takes a set of strings, i.e. the product identifiers, and it just stores them away in this product identifiers property. Next, let's think about the API inside an extension. We want to create a function that requests the products and then returns them back to us. The store kit method used for requesting a list of products is asynchronous, so we need to handle that by providing a closure to return the results. We're also going to need to store that away, and since the request needs to be kept hold of, we need that as a property as well. So we need two more properties to store the product request and the result handler, and then we can go ahead and write this method. So head up back up to the top, 
and add the following two properties. The first property is the products request, that's the SK products request. And then there's the product request completion handler, which I've given a type product request completion handler. And that type doesn't actually exist, we're just using it to tidy up the implementation. So we just need to add a type alias for that. This type alias makes a closure which takes an optional list of SK products and returns a void. Now that we've got those bits and pieces, we can go ahead and create the API method that we wanted. Its signature will look like this. So what do we need to do first? Well, if there's a products request already happening, we need to stop it. We need to make sure that we save off the completion handler, and then we can go ahead and create the request. Notice that creating an SK products request just takes a set of strings, the set of the product identifiers, which we provided at initialization time. So that's really simple. Now the question is how does a products request return its results? Well, it uses a delegate of the form SK product request delegate, which has a couple of methods on there that when the request comes in with the with the product or with an error, it'll call that method. So let's go ahead and implement that delegate before we finish off this method. The methods that you need are products request did receive response and request did fail with error. What do we need to do in these? So these will get called. You'll be provided with the request, which we created above, and we'll get a response. When we get provided with the products, i.e. it succeeded, we just need to hand those to the completion handler. Notice that the response includes an array of products, an array of SK products. That's exactly what we wanted, so we just call the completion handler and provide the array of products that the response has given us. Once we've done that, we no longer need the completion handler, we can get rid of it, and we can also kill off the request. Then when we call it again, all will work. What do we do in the case of an error? Well actually most of the code is the same, so I'm just going to copy that, paste it in there. Obviously now we can't return any products, so in this case we're just going to return with none, because it takes an optional, and I'm also just going to print out the error. Okay, that's all we need to implement in the delegate. If we head back up to the request products with completion handler API method that we're creating, I just need to assign that delegate and then tell the request it can start. And that completes that implementation. So how do you use this IAP helper? First of all, you provide it with a set of strings that represent the product identifiers that you expect to be associated with this app. And then when you want to get a list of products, which you'll need to do in order to buy them, then you call this request products with a completion handler. That will go away, ask the store for all of the products that match the identifiers that you previously provided. And then it will call your completion handler back with the list of products or none if there's an error. Before we finish this demo, we should probably check that this works. Best place to do that, let's open up the app delegate. The way that this architecture will work is that the app delegate will create and own the one single IAP helper, and then it will pass it to anything that it needs. Now you're not going to have to do any of that, that will be done for you in the starter projects, but what we do need to do now is create one of those helpers. And we create that using the initializer that we created that takes a list of prod IDs. That needs to be a set, you create a set with an array literal that makes life much easier. And what we're going to put in here at this point, you'll need to replace it with your ID. Now that I've done that, inside the app did finish launching with options, just underneath style the app, we're just going to call that method that we created. Wait a moment for source kit to restart. There we go. So this is just going to return an optional array of products, SK products. 
We're going to use guard to jump out if it's none. We don't really care. And then we're just going to print out a list of the product identifiers that we've extracted using this product identifier property on SK product. And now if we build and run, and check out the log, down at the bottom here, we've got that first one there, com.raywenderlick.greengrocer.addremoval. In theory, you should see exactly the same. In reality, you may not. In which case, you need to go back and check through all of those stages that we've done to make sure everything works. There is one possibility that it takes a while for in-app purchases to actually appear once you've created them. I've read reports of it taking several hours. If that's the case, then you just have to wait. That's it for this video tutorial, and as ever, we love to leave you with a challenge. During the video, you learnt how to set up your app for in-app purchase in iTunes Connect by adding the different products. Your challenge is to complete the setup of IAPs required for this tutorial series. You'll also need to update your app in order to test that it works. Unlike standard video challenges, this one is actually required in order for you to follow along with the rest of the tutorial series. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial, thank you ever so much for watching and we'll see you next time.